Well, we'll find out because the earnings are coming down the pike here. But we have breaking news right now from the Federal Trade Commission, which is launching an investigation into surveillance pricing. In other words, the ability to charge different customers different prices. The agency wants more information about how AI is used to change pricing rapidly based on data about customers' behavior and other characteristics. So the FTC is now demanding the information from eight companies, all of which advertise their AI and other tech tools with a trove of customer information to target prices to individual customers. So those companies, MasterCard and Chase, you've got Pros, which was just named Microsoft's Internet Service Vendor of the Year this year. Yeah, the big thing is we thought we were in a Trump rally and uh, we'd be moving to broader base, Russell, small caps. Uh, but what's actually happening is there's a little pause. People are wondering if this is where we're headed, right? And the mag seven have been areas where you're either the flight to safety, but they're also an earning, they're also growth vehicles. And so they're not mutually exclusive. And so what we're sitting on right now is people are coming back into tech as they saw the dip and they're wondering what's going to happen with the election. So they're taking a pause on that. And of course, we've got Tesla earnings coming up and we also have Google earnings that are going to set the stage as to how tech is doing and how the mag seven are going to perform. Now, according to two of these sources, first reported by Reuters, NVIDIA will work with Inspur on the launch and distribution of that B20 chip, with shipments slated to start in the second quarter of 2025. We did also see lots of analysts that had nothing but positive things to say about NVIDIA today. We didn't think it was just a hardware business. We thought it was hardware, software, platform dynamics, and we thought it could perform over the next 25 years more in line with Microsoft, which implied a value much higher, so we've paid 550 pre-split, we thought it could easily be worth 900. Wow. Now they've continued to be earnings, so we think it could be higher, but it's hard to make a, a real case that it's undervalued in here. We still think it can earn market-like returns. So it's, it's kind of just a hold for you now. Assertions have been made regarding the crucial role of Taiwan in the semiconductor industry. It has been unequivocally stated that no other nation possesses the capability to match Taiwan's prowess in manufacturing semiconductors. Kelly, we think the bull market continues and the path of least resistance is higher. So people have been, you know, I've been in the markets a long time now. The whole time since we've been in this bull market from the lows in March of 2009, people have been worried about the end of the bull market. The market, the S&P 500 is up 1,000 percent, 17 percent a year over that time period. So but fear and pessimism have been strong. I would say we're in the later stages, but we don't see any end to the bull market. We do think there's a good chance we see a rotation and small caps, the laggards, do much better. And half the leadership in this group is getting murdered. That That's your sign. You know, we've seen some selling the last couple of days, as you said. I think it's probably going to be a short term pullback. But this is heavy volume selling and there's a lot of profit taking going there. Even at NVIDIA, I mean, look at the people that work there. You know, the CEO is selling record amounts of stock. The, the insider is selling record amounts of stock. So I think the writing is on the wall there. And if you're trying to chase that trade, I just think you're late to the point. We revised NVIDIA's price target from $120 to $175, a substantial upward adjustment. Meanwhile, reports from Reuters highlight the development of a new flagship AI chip in China that appears to have evaded potential regulatory setbacks in the current U.S. administration. Adding to the bullish sentiment, Piper Sandler has also raised its price target for NVIDIA, projecting significant upside potential. These developments underscore a concerted effort among analysts to bolster NVIDIA's position as a key player in the tech sector. Reflecting on these advancements, one might question the implications of a Harris presidency versus a Trump presidency for Silicon Valley. The prospect of a Chinese chip gaining approval under the Trump administration seems improbable, contrasting sharply with a more favorable outlook under current leadership. Notably, the upcoming fireside chat between NVIDIA's general Vincent Huang and Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg at an upcoming graphics conference on the 29th has generated substantial interest. Despite initial skepticism surrounding this event, ticket sales have surged, highlighting the market's enthusiasm. Despite looming geopolitical tensions, Fitzgerald emphasizes the company's resilience and growth prospects. Regarding geopolitical risks, Fitzgerald addresses concerns raised by former political figures about Taiwan and potential measures from the Biden administration aimed at tightening restrictions on China's access to high-end chips. He acknowledges the real possibility of increased restrictions in recent discussions. The focus has been on the anticipated growth in various technology sectors, such as smartphones, PCS and enterprise servers. However, 
Amidst this growth, there are notable considerations regarding geopolitical dynamics, particularly in the realm of semiconductor technology. Looking ahead, there is a delicate balance to be struck between safeguarding strategic interests and fostering global technological collaboration. The debate underscores the interconnectedness of global markets and the complex interplay between economic policies, technological innovation, and geopolitical tensions. As discussions continue, stakeholders across industries are closely monitoring developments that could shape the future future landscape of technology and trade.in, the realm of global technology and geopolitics. Assertions have been made regarding the crucial role of Taiwan in the semiconductor industry. It has been unequivocally stated that no other nation possesses the capability to match Taiwan's prowess in manufacturing semiconductors. This declaration underscores Taiwan's indispensable position in the global supply chain for advanced technological components. Turning our focus to the semiconductor sector itself, Cameron Fitzgerald, an esteemed analyst, has recently added advocated for a bullish stance on ASML Holdings Nevada, assigning it a buy rating with a price target of $1,320. Despite looming geopolitical tensions, Fitzgerald emphasizes the company's resilience and growth prospects. Regarding geopolitical risks, Fitzgerald addresses concerns raised by former political figures about Taiwan and potential measures from the Biden administration aimed at tightening restrictions on China's access to high-end chips. He acknowledges the real possibility of increased restrictions, citing existing limits limitations on ASML's ability to service certain entities in China. These restrictions, he argues, are intended to curtail China's capacity to develop cutting-edge semiconductors, a move that has bipartisan support in Washington. Reflecting on recent developments, including a market downturn affecting ASML's stock price by 10%, Fitzgerald suggests that the reaction may have been excessive. He points out that despite broader concerns, ASML's operational performance has shown resilience. I share stock market's latest news, datas, and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else, open the description of this video, click on my Telegram channel's link, and simply join my Telegram channel. Looking ahead, there is a delicate balance to be struck between safeguarding strategic interests and fostering global technological collaboration. The debate underscores the interconnectedness of global markets and the complex interplay between economic policies, technological innovation, and geopolitical tensions. As discussions continue, Stakeholders across industries are closely monitoring developments that could shape the future landscape of technology and trade. A pertinent issue discussed was the effectiveness of existing measures versus potential frustrations within certain administrative circles. This debate hinges on how various restrictions are perceived and their impacts on global technological leadership. For instance, the development of a 7 nanometer chip by Huawei has underscored concerns and raised alarms about technological sovereignty and strategic interests. These developments have prompted discussions about potential tightening restrictions on key semiconductor manufacturing equipment providers like ASML and Nikon, which are critical for advancing chip fabrication capabilities. The dialogue has highlighted contrasting perspectives on the efficacy of current policies. Some view restrictions as necessary steps to safeguard technological advantages and national security, arguing that limiting access to cutting-edge semiconductor tools could curb China's technological progress in critical areas such as advanced chip manufacturing. Others caution against overly restrictive measures that could stifle global innovation and disrupt supply chains. The extraordinary pace and scale of NVIDIA's recent growth. It's almost unprecedented in the history of the stock market. Attempting to rally, but the I think it's actually very healthy. We'd be more concerned if it continued to rise by 2% to 3% daily. If you look at basic technicals, it was significantly above the 50-day moving average, which is around $100. While it might not drop to that level, the stock does need to take a breather and consolidate. I'm confident sellers will step in. Keep in mind, earnings are not due until August 21st, the tail end of the earnings season. We approach the market opening. The spotlight is squarely on NVIDIA, whose defensive strategies are gaining attention. NVIDIA, a perennial concern in the stock market, has recently seen its peak in a subsequent decline in performance, performance reflecting a challenging chart trajectory. However, today brings a tide of optimism fueled by analyst reports. Loop Capital has... I share stock market's latest news, datas, and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else, open the description of this video, click on my Telegram channel's link, and simply join my Telegram channel. Even with a $5 billion valuation, such events are pivotal in shaping perceptions within the mega-cap tech sphere. 
Moreover, the partnership between NVIDIA and Facebook signals a strategic alignment that could prove mutually beneficial. Jensen Huang's transformation from a figure associated with combativeness to one fostering collaboration underscores NVIDIA's evolving narrative. In contemplating NVIDIA's future dominance and potential market shifts, Michael NS, chief market strategist at Trade Ideas, provides insightful perspectives. He emphasizes the importance of trends persisting in the market and suggests that while NVIDIA may continue to lead, broader market dynamics are indicating a potential rotation. Michael highlights recent market movements such as the significant uptick in small cap stocks and broader market indices, suggesting these could signify the beginning of a larger rotation away from previous leaders like NVIDIA. Such a move aims to capture a significant market segment below the average car selling price in the U.S., which is around $48,000. Tesla's strategy involves launching both a lower price car with traditional features and, subsequently, a robo-taxi variant. This differentiation is crucial to avoid market confusion and effectively target the growing segment of affordable electric vehicles. Regarding valuing Tesla comprehensively, the approach involves projecting revenues three to five years ahead, taking into account potential growth scenarios such as a rebound to 30% growth rates, benchmarking Tesla against leading companies like Apple, considering their multifaceted approach encompassing hardware, software, and services, provides a valuation framework typically yielding a valuation multiple in the range of six to seven times revenue, Integrating these factors suggests Tesla's market cap could comfortably exceed a trillion dollars over a five-year horizon, pending further clarity on their long-term growth strategies as articulated in upcoming disclosures. And the recent outlook from Tesla is arguably the most cautious we've seen, particularly with their mention of a significant slowdown in growth rates. Previously, the market anticipated a robust 19% revenue growth for 2024, but Tesla now indicates it will be notably lower, potentially around 10%. Initially, I expected the stock to drop by 5% to 10% in response, but it's surprising to see it holding steady. Two factors likely contribute to this resilience. But Firstly, as you pointed out, there's the improvement in gross margin excluding credits, a positive surprise after a year. This improvement is especially noteworthy given ongoing investments like the Cybertruck ramp up. Secondly, the stock's stability reflects the strong conviction of Tesla's shareholder and an investor base. At its core, the market reaction boils down to a straightforward question, do you believe electric vehicles, EVs, and autonomy are the future? If not, and you foresee a slow 20-year transition to electrification, a significant stock decline may seem justified. However, if you believe in the long-term potential of EVs and autonomy, Tesla's current soft guidance for the year may be seen as temporary noise. Everything Tesla is doing advancing their next generation vehicle platform and investing in autonomy positions them favorably, especially as traditional automakers retreat from these innovations. Regarding Tesla's next generation vehicle platform, it represents their strategic leap forward in vehicle architecture and technology. This platform promises enhanced performance, efficiency, and scalability, setting a foundation for Tesla's future product lineup. Despite potential short-term challenges in growth rates, this platform underscores Tesla's commitment to innovation and leadership in the EV market. At its core, the market reaction boils down to a straightforward question, do you believe electric vehicles, EVs, and autonomy are the future? If not, and you foresee a slow 20-year transition to electrification, a significant stock decline may seem justified. However, if you believe in the long-term potential of EVs and autonomy, Tesla's current soft guidance for the year may be seen as temporary noise. Everything Tesla is doing advancing their next generation vehicle platform and investing in autonomy positions them favorably, especially as traditional automakers retreat from these innovations. Uh, regarding Tesla's next generation vehicle platform, it represents their strategic leap forward in vehicle architecture and technology. This platform promises enhanced performance, efficiency, and scalability, setting a foundation for Tesla's future product lineup. Despite potential short-term challenges in growth rates, this platform underscores Tesla's commitment to innovation and leadership in the EV market. Tesla's financial stability, bolstered by a substantial $26 billion cash reserve, underscores its resilience amid market uncertainties. Uh